Matthew Stuckey here, and I want to make a quick video on how to explain suicide in your gospel presentation. How to explain suicide in your gospel presentation. Now, in a Catholic country like the Philippines, it is an absolute necessity to explain suicide because pretty much every single person, whether they're Catholic or whether or not they're Christian or whatever, whatever their denomination is, they have been taught and they believe that committing suicide automatically sends you to hell. But to be saved, somebody must believe that the gift of God is eternal life. The gift is not conditional life or temporary life, but it is eternal life. And people need to understand that they are 100% saved and their future sins are wiped away. And they have eternal life no matter what that they can never lose for any reason. They must understand that to be saved or they're calling God a liar according to 1 John 5. Now, I want you to realize this that when it comes to us explaining the gospel, the gospel is meant to be simple, right? You don't have to have a, a, a doctorate in electrical engineering in order to explain the gospel. You don't have to be able to speak like a hundred languages to, to preach the gospel. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world to preach the gospel. And the reason why is because all we're explaining is that salvation is a gift. We're explaining the concept of being born again. Right? I mean, people understand the first birth, that when you're born physically, you don't do the work. It's the mom that does the work. Just like with eternal life, Jesus did the work, not us. And you're only born one time, and your parents are always your parents, but they punish you when you act up. So we're explaining a gift. We're explaining being born again. And three examples of how easy salvation is in the Bible. Jesus talks about, you know, he's the living water. So drinking a glass of water, pretty easy. Eating a slice of bread because he said, I am that bread of life. Pretty easy to eat a slice of bread. I am the door. Opening a door, pretty easy, right? So what we're explaining, the gospel, is actually very simple. And, you know, you honestly, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be able to get people saved. You just have to explain the simple gospel that God created. And he gave us simple examples. And there's power in the words of God not in our, in our own words. But we need to take this understanding when we look at the topic of suicide because the gospel is meant to be simple. So when we're explaining suicide and why that does not make you lose your salvation, your explanation should be simple. It should not be complicated. It should not confuse them. It should make perfect sense like the rest of the gospel does. Now, I've heard a lot of people, you know, explain suicide in the gospel in their gospel presentations many different ways, and a lot of good-intentioned people that are just trying to, to explain eternal security. But quite honestly, many of the ways I've heard are just very confusing, and I just don't believe they're the best way to explain how suicide does not make you lose your salvation. What I found to be the best way to explain this is to help them understand that there's a difference between the body and the soul. And when we get saved, our soul receives eternal life. Our soul is saved. However, we're all still going to die one day. Now, committing suicide, does that kill the body or does it kill the soul? And when I'm explaining this, I actually have my hands up here like this. And I have, I say, this is eternal life. This is salvation. This is my body. This is my soul. Is it my body or my soul that has eternal life? They're going to say, well, your soul. It's like my soul has eternal life. Committing suicide, what did you kill, your body or soul? And they're going to usually say body. And if they don't, then you kind of explain it to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. And then you say, you know, well, committing suicide caused you to kill your body, but my soul has eternal life. So my soul would still be saved because it's everlasting life. It is eternal life, not physical, but the promise is a spiritual promise. And usually it really clicks with people. Oh, yeah, that's right. Eternal life. It's a spiritual thing. It's your soul that has eternal life, not your body. Your body's going to die anyway. So it makes sense when you commit suicide, you're just killing your body. You wouldn't lose your eternal life. I found that to be the best way to explain suicide. Just explain the difference between the body and the soul. And usually it makes sense with people. And sometimes I'll even mention right afterwards, and, and, and here's the thing. Did Jesus just die for some of your sins? They'll say, no, all of the sins. Just the past sins or the future as well? The future as well. Just the small sins, or does that include big sins like murder and suicide when it says he died for the sins of the whole world in 1 John 2, 2? They're going to say for all sins. So here's the thing. If he died for the sin of suicide and he promised you eternal life, and he's all-knowing, knowing that he's promising you spiritual life that lasts forever, and he died for that sin of suicide, and then he forgives you the moment you get saved, would that make you lose your salvation? And, you know, it really clicks with people. If you want to bring up certain people in the Bible that committed suicide and still went to heaven, 
I look at three people that I personally believe committed suicide that went to heaven. You know, Samson and King Saul, I believe the Bible clearly states. Ahithophel, I believe, was also saved. But with Ahithophel, you know, people might have a different opinion, so I wouldn't bring that up. And then you have Samson and King Saul. What I found is that most people explain King Saul when, quite honestly, I think Samson would be a much better way to explain it. Where if you want to bring somebody up after you've explained the difference between the body and the soul, I would say Samson. And what I say when I explain Samson from time to time is this. I say, well, you know, you remember Samson? He was the strongest man in the Bible. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, Samson and Delilah. I know that story. And, I, and I'll ask them, do you remember how Samson died? And usually they're not really familiar, they, they, they forget. I said, well, Samson was inside of a building, right? And he took down the pillars and he killed himself and everybody that was inside the building. And I asked them, you know, Samson, was he in heaven or hell? And most people are already aware that Samson went to heaven. We have the hall of faith to confirm that in the book of Hebrews if you would need it. But most people already realize Samson was in heaven. So here's the thing. I said, you know, I tell people, well, in America, we, we call that like a suicide bomber similar to a Muslim that would hop in a plane and just intentionally kill themselves and other people. And I said, Samson was like a suicide bomber because he killed himself and everybody else around. But you just told me that Samson was in heaven. And the reason why he's in heaven, even though he committed suicide, is because he had spiritual life that lasted forever, not physical life that lasted forever. Now, when people explain King Saul, I don't think King Saul's the best way to prove that somebody who commits suicide is still saved. I think it's an awesome proof that no matter what you do, you can never lose your salvation, but it's a very complex explanation. The reason why is because you're going to be in 1 Samuel 28 and 1 Samuel 31. You're going to be bouncing around, and then you see Samuel is brought back from the dead, and Saul is talking to him. Also, people aren't as familiar with who King Saul is. It's a very confusing story. And you're jumping around to several chapters, and it's going to take a long time to accurately explain that. Take four or five minutes at least just to, to get a, just a basic you know, explanation of that. And they could still walk away confused because they're not really sure as you're bouncing around. Honestly, if you're going to use a person, Samson's the easier explanation to use. Now, no doubt, I believe King Saul went to heaven, but I'm just saying it's probably not the best way to explain because it is more confusing. But honestly, the best way is just really making a difference between the body and the soul. And quite honestly, most soul winners I know, you know, here in the Philippines, we're, we're pretty much in agreement with this, that explaining the difference between the body and the soul is just a much simpler way, and people really seem to understand it. And here in the Philippines, we always explain suicide during the gospel presentation, because you get to the end, and Catholics will still say, well, if you commit this sin, though, you can lose your salvation. What we found to be the best way is just explaining the difference between the body and the soul, and explaining that Jesus died for all sins, including suicide. And if you want to use somebody as an example, you know, Samson would be a good example, even more so than Saul, because people are more familiar with Samson and because they can relate to what a suicide bomber is, they understand that. Whereas Saul talking to Samuel, who got brought back from the dead and consulting a witch and bouncing from 1 Samuel 28 to 31, it makes the gospel very confusing. And here's the thing. We need to remember that the gospel is meant to be something simple that we can easily explain. Once you start getting confusing, you might want to think of a way to make it a little bit more simple. Thank you and God bless.